Leg, showing some leg. Ankle, uh-oh. Cover your eyes, kids. You got a foot fetish? Not today. I think everybody needs to watch this video because this is just the juice. The answer is Jesus. Stop focusing on the sin. The answer will always be Jesus. Always, always, always. It's always going to work. We love Jesus. We're getting modest. We're getting crazy. We're getting modest. <laughs> Lord help me. I have been avoiding making this video. Oh wait, I gotta pray. Dear Jesus, please help me. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Kyan and I'm so happy you're here. Don't forget to subscribe because I post videos like this pretty often. Today we are going to be talking about modesty. <laughs> so fun. I promise to make it fun. Should I promise that? Yeah, I'll promise that. I promise this is not your typical modesty spiel. And I will be honest in saying, I have been avoiding making this video for a long time. <laughs> but here we are, we're doing it. Um, I'm trying out a new hairstyle. Let me know if you like it. I use my sister's waiver. I think it's pretty fun. I feel like, I feel sassy. <sighs> Maybe I'll just talk a little bit about my journey with modesty. I'm like wearing the most modest thing possible right now for this video. <laughs> Here's the thing. My struggle with modesty started before I was a Christian. I think it started when I was honestly probably back to high school, but I would say more intensely in college. And I went to Arizona State University. It's a big party school. It's known for having really hot girls. There's a lot of emphasis on your looks. And when I was, I don't know, maybe like a sophomore in college, people started following accounts like Total Frat Move and like, all of these things featuring girls who were essentially like naked. Um, and there were girls in my colleges who were basically getting reposted on these Instagrams and getting a lot of attention, getting a lot of followers. And that is when it started to kind of click in my head that, oh, I need to post things like this to get followers, to get attention, um, to get more likes. And honestly, I started doing that. I started posting more exposing photos of myself and I started to lean on basically my sexuality to kind of receive. I never felt good about it. I never felt like genuine about it. Um, it honestly felt pretty desperate and I was being desperate. Like, let's be serious, that's pretty desperate. I'm pretty sure at one point I even, did I pay? I think I really honestly paid an account to like give me a shout out. And then another time I literally took a picture in my underwear for them to post. I ended up like untagging myself, like that's how bad it got, but that was just like the influence that society was having on me. So <laughs> yeah, when I came to Christ, I wasn't convicted about modesty right away. I actually ended up pic posting pictures like this after I came to Christ. And it was actually that photo that my grandma reached out to my mom and was like, I thought Cayenne was a Christian. Christian, <laughs> I thought Cayenne was a Christian. Like, why is she posting this? And I was just like, okay, grandma. I'm gonna have to mute you on, on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> but really that was my mentality. Like I wanted to feel sexy. Um, I n knew I got like good responses from photos like that. I like the attention. We're just being honest here. So I can relate if that's why you do it too. I get it. As time went on, I stopped posting bikini photos um, like, really just like butt shots, you know, like I will still post a picture in a swimsuit, but I wasn't posting like butt shots anymore. Uh, and then I like started to change, especially cause like going to church, I wouldn't wear stuff like that. So I kind of like started adjusting to clothes that I felt more comfortable in at church. And it was just a slow 
process. Then I shared my testimony and that got a large Christian audience to be looking at my videos. From there, I think shortly after I posted my testimony, I posted like a bikini try on haul and I started getting a lot of mean comments on it. I eventually just like took down the video because I was like trying to defend myself and people were just commenting a lot of mean stuff about how I'm not a Christian and just all these things at when they just watched my testimony video and were like just congratulating me and encouraging me. And then they're going over to this other video and just trying to convict me. And it was super discouraging and frustrating. And let me tell you that trying to convict someone about what they are wearing is not the like way to do it. It's just not, it's not effective. It doesn't work. It made me just feel even more discouraged. It made me feel further away from Christian community. I didn't, I, I was honestly just really annoyed and frustrated and it didn't do anything to make me want to change. I just like took down the video because I felt just like attacked. From there, I just continued on with my journey with God. And as I got closer to Jesus, those desires to cover myself more and just wear things that were more appropriate, those came naturally because I'll read the verse, Ezekiel 36, 26. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And that's exactly what happened. As you get closer to Jesus, he gives you his heart, his desires, and you start wanting to become more like him and representing him more as you get closer. It's just naturally something that happens. It's a heart transformation. It's not a list of like orders and telling us what to do that makes us change. People telling me to not sin doesn't make me not sin. Me becoming more like Jesus makes me not sin. And so I think that is a huge thing with modesty is everybody wants to focus on the sin and telling people not to do it when we really should just be encouraging people to get closer to Jesus because he will tell people, he will give people those desires to change and we can't do that. So let's stop. Whew. So for the longest time, I was just like, honestly, you know, I had some beef with men and for a long time, I just was like, you guys need to figure it out. It's not my fault. Get your stuff together. That was kind of my attitude towards it. And then I listened to a podcast. Um, I think it was like the redefined woman. And I, I think she like interviewed somebody. I'll see if I can find it, but I listened to this podcast and it really just changed my perspective and it opened up my heart towards the struggle men have and how they have so much access to porn and literally so many girls are now posting like very revealing photos of themselves and honestly they don't stand a chance we as women are not setting them up for success and in that moment it just clicked for me that it's not all their responsibility. We have responsibility in this too, but it's an even responsibility. It's not all up to them and it's not all up to us. It is both of us coming together to support one another, not putting the blame on women, and then women taking responsibility in how we do present ourselves and what we are posting to support our brothers in Christ. So then that's like when everything started changing in my attitude towards men and knowing like, you know, I'm here to support them. This isn't about like a blame game and who's responsible. This is about supporting my brothers in Christ and knowing that their struggle is real and like they have access to all this stuff and it's constantly being pushed in their faces. And if I can do a small part and create a safe profile for them to follow and get encouragement by without um, my photo leading to sexual thoughts and then them going on a trail to more sexual photos and even more really revealing photos to then doing, watching porn and stuff. Like, I don't wanna be the start for any of that. So once I got behind this new vision of, I also need to support my brothers in Christ by what I wear, um, yeah, everything changed even more. My convictions on what I wore got stronger. And 
yeah all this stuff was a slow process it happened over time and like i said it was a heart transformation people telling me what to wear and what not to wear didn't do anything it just made me frustrated and discouraged so just really hearing struggles from christian men that i respect um and that's something i would do when someone would comment on my videos about what i was wearing being distracting I would go to my brothers in Christ who I have a deep relationship with and ask, hey, is what I'm wearing distracting? And then they would say, no, I, nothing you've worn has ever been um, like triggering for me. And because they are my close community, I know I can trust that opinion and respect it. It makes me just feel more confident in it that maybe this person just has a lot of struggle that they need to work through and it's like on a more intense level and maybe they can't even like look at any woman without feeling lust and at some point that has to stop that was putting that responsibility on me has to stop because i'm sure i could wear this in a video and still tempt somebody so there has to be responsible responsibility on both lines on both ends and to that, I just say the Bible gives us clear instruction to flee from sexual immorality. Yes, it would be great if we could change everybody and censor what everybody wears. However, if like me wearing this or like me wearing a top that shows like right here is tempting you still, then flee. You do not need to watch my videos or just listen to my videos and don't watch them. But the Bible clearly says to flee. So if anything anyone's posting is tempting you don't go to them and be like hey i need you to change what you're wearing and you know adjust your life to keep me from sinning especially a stranger on the internet i just don't feel like that is an appropriate thing to do it says to flee so if that is happening then flee don't watch the videos don't follow the person um, because there's only so much responsibility you can put on somebody else um, at the end of the day, you have control of what you're looking at. Again, it's like we're on the same team. We need to support each other, but there can't be like one gender is responsible for everything because that's not cool. It's really not. I feel like this is getting serious. Okay, let's give some Bible verses up in here. 1 Corinthians six nineteen through 20. Do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were brought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So that verse is fire. What I get from that is that God bought our bodies with a price and we kind of cheapen ourselves when we give in to, you know, wanting attention and like posting, revealing photo photos of ourselves. And it's a little bit tricky right now because I'm like, there's this whole movement going on, like body confidence, body freedom, um, free the nipple. Ugh. So it's a little bit tough because there's like that whole thing and I'm all for body confidence and that, but that makes it a battle of genders because us saying like free the nipple is like, men get over it stop sexualizing us we should be able to just be free and naked without worrying about you lusting over us or making sexual comments like that's kind of essentially what it is so it's kind of just a battle between gender and that's just what i don't believe in ideally we would all be running around naked that's how god created us to be unashamed so i get it i get it there's definitely like you know it's there the concept is there however we are in a fallen world and though so that changes things that changes things and i don't have all the answers i know i don't know <laughs> i don't know wow this whole issue is becoming so much more complex <sighs> this can be just like a whole conversation i should really have this conversation with some people because I am, I don't even know. I don't know. But I will say that verse, I went to this, there's this ministry called Buela Strip Church. 
and they go into strip clubs and they just like bring them gifts and give them cards, words of encouragement, just there to remind them that Jesus loves them. Love it. I will link in their Instagram in um, my description. I really wanted to get involved with it, but it's in Chicago and now I'm moving to Arizona. So I'm so sad because it would have been like the coolest experience ever. And just, I mean, my heart is just with those women. And I love the messaging behind it that they are not there to try to get people to stop stripping. They're simply there to just remind them that they are so loved by Jesus and um, Christians that we love them too. Jesus loves strippers. That's their motto. I love it. Okay, anyway, sidetrack. Her testimony was the woman who started it was actually a stripper for 10 years, I believe eight to 10 years. And she encountered Jesus when she was on stage she was um, handing this man, or no, she was grabbing money from a man. She was like leaning over on stage, taking money from this guy. And she hears God say, I bought your price. Oh no, I ruined the moment. I paid a price for your body. So honor with. I'm ruining this. She leans over to grab the money and she hears God say, I paid a price for your body, so honor me with it. <laughs> I can't believe I wanted to be an actress one, once upon a time. That was her first encounter with God, and then she started going to church. And the crazy thing is, she still stripped for five more years after that. Um, and it, it really just took her getting to know Jesus to finally get to a point where she stopped. But that's the thing, like, the issue isn't the sin and telling people to stop doing this is not going to encourage them encouraging them to get closer to jesus now he has the power to do that has the power to transform our hearts and make us want to stop these things so that's a little side tangent about that verse first timothy 2 9 I also want the woman to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. Um, so that's great. I'm not trying to get on this board wagon, bandwagon of trying to convict you guys either. I'm just here for to encourage you to get closer with Jesus. If you've started to feel a little bit convicted about what you're wearing, ask God about it. Read these verses and maybe they will encourage you, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you what you should and should not wear because I don't like me telling you to do that is not cool and I know it's not effective. So that's not what this video is about. It's about get closer with Jesus, go through these scriptures, and he will put those desires in you. My opinion is not a solution for anything. Okay, the final thing I will say about modesty. This was gold for me. This was the key um, to what really changed my decisions on what I was gonna wear. So. This is what I do. This is the secret sauce. I ask myself, okay, I pick a Christian woman who I love and respect. So let's just say Jess Conti, Kristen Johns, they're both married, perfect. They're Christian, I love them, they're so sweet. I respect them so much. I don't even, I've never even met them. Yeah, so find a Christian woman in your life and someone who you really respect and use them for this question. This is the question I ask myself. Would I be comfortable with their husbands following me on Instagram? Would the photos I'm posting be appropriate for their husbands to look at? Like if I were to become BFFs with them tomorrow, would they go to my Instagram and be like, whoa, like I don't think I'm comfortable with my husband following them. Like that would feel just horrible. I would hate that. Um, and so asking myself those questions whoo, convicted me <laughs> because I was like, dang, I never want to dishonor someone's marriage. 
um, and dishonor a woman from what I'm posting, I would really want these women to feel comfortable with their husbands looking at my profile. And that question just like really hit hit me in a new way. And now that is kind of like my standard for what I post, what I wear. Would I be comfortable with, you know, their husband seeing this? Would this honor them? Um, and yeah, that question has literally changed everything for me and I will continue to reference it. I encourage you guys to start asking that to yourselves because I think it's a really powerful way in like, I'm doing this to honor my sisters and brothers in Christ instead of I'm doing this because people tell me I should or people made me feel guilty about it or shameful about it. That doesn't feel very empowering, but doing this to protect others' hearts and honor them, that sounds like a party. <laughs> okay. And you know, my journey to modesty is still going. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I felt a little convicted about wearing my tight leggings that like really accentuate my butt to the gym. I started feeling uncomfortable. I just felt like men were looking and I didn't feel comfortable with that. Um, since then, I have worn tight leggings to the gym every time. So, like I said, it is an ongoing process and we're just we're just gonna ride it out if that conviction is still heavy on my heart maybe i just need to wear longer tanks that cover it i don't know god will give me the solution he will continue to press my heart if that's something he really wants me to change but this journey's never ending give people grace encourage people to get closer to jesus not to cover up i think everybody needs to watch this video because this is just the juice. The answer is Jesus. Stop focusing on the sin. The answer will always be Jesus. Pointing out people's sin is never the answer. Pointing people to Jesus, A, always works. Always, 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 always. It's always going to work. We love Jesus. Okay, well, I'm gonna end my video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this was, you know, convicting in a healthy way that encouraged you instead of made you feel like crap. I hope for that, I pray for that because I am not here to make you feel like crap. Please share it with a friend. Um, that is like the best way you can support my channel is by sharing my videos with your community or your friends. And also be sure you're following me on Instagram right here I'm definitely more active on instagram so if you ever want to message me hit me up i do my best to get back to messages within a week um llama it's kyle llama i'm kind of going crazy this coffee's a really hitting me <laughs> whoa whoop Leg, showing some leg, ankle, uh-oh. Cover your eyes, kids. You got a foot fetish? Not today. <clears throat> Things are just, okay, Jesus, I hear you. Reel it in, we're reeling it in. I'm hot. <laughs> okay, guys, I love you so much. I will see you in Monday's video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up leave some comments. I will go chat with y'all down there and downstairs. Bye. Pray for me, please.